Hi, welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm gonna be making pastrami. It's a, it's a bit of a process and the recipe is a little bit complicated, but hopefully uh, I'll make it easy for you guys. So let's get started. Okay, first things first, every good cook should know this. The first step is wash your hands. Hot water, good soap. With all this uh, coronavirus, human, whatever, you need to wash your hands anyways, at least. 10 times a day. So that's what we're doing. Wash our hands and get ready with our spice. Okay, our pickling spice. I went to the store and I found that they have a, a package of pickling spice and it has everything you want in there. Uh, mustard, uh, mustard seed, coriander, black pepper, uh, 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 chili pot or chili, chili flake, but in the big, and it's got the bay leaf in it. So what I did is I took the bay leaf out, the pepper, and I added coriander, and I added a little bit more of uh, added star anise, and uh, some more black pepper, and uh, uh, they're called in Spanish clavos, what they're called in English. Well, anyways, uh, it's like a licorice tasting. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna toast that up, just so they can become aromatic, and what happens is I'm not gonna cook them, I'm just gonna get them hot, then I'm gonna crush them, and then we're gonna throw it in our brining bucket, and that's gonna go for six days. And the brisket, I'm not gonna use the point. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim it down, cut the point off, and pickle that too, but separate from the whole thing, from the whole flat. So that way there'll be, instead of two pieces, there'll be four pieces. But uh, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna start by toasting that. Just for a minute. We'll see you then. Okay, we're toasting our uh, spices here. I don't want to burn them. There's no oil in this pan. I just want to get them hot. And as soon as they get hot, they become fragrant. So when they become fragrant, I know that's it. We stop right there. And I'm starting to smell now. Then I'm going to take them and I'm going to crush them for a little bit and throw them in our boiling water. Okay, we got our spice grinder out. I'm going to pour it in here. Try not to make a mess. And put this on like this. And I don't want to make powder out of it. I just want to crush them a little bit. There you go. Now I'm going to add our spice mix in there. That goes in there like that. Eight, eight teaspoons of salt. Twelve uh, bay leaves, cut uh, chopped up. Ten uh, whole peppers dried. One whole cinnamon stick crushed. Two cups of uh, granulated white sugar. And we're gonna give that a mix. Let that come to a boil. And then we're gonna add ice and add it to the brining bucket. Okay, I got all our spices, our sugar, our salt, curing salt, and everything, and this is what it looks like. I'm letting that mix and letting that get hot. This bring it to Soon, first second it starts boiling, it's done. So uh, then it's gonna go in the brining bucket. We'll see you then. Okay, we're gonna add one teaspoon of uh, granulated garlic, one teaspoon of granulated onion, that goes in there. 12 cloves of garlic, give that a mix. I think our brine is done. Okay. I always start with a good sharp knife. I just sharpen these and they're sharp. Be careful. Uh, this is going to be a bloody mess. So what you want to do is you want to drain the, the blood in the sink. So let me just cut this. A big piece of meat. Now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna cut this point off. 
because it's gonna take longer to smoke, longer to cure, but we're still gonna use it. Definitely gonna use it. We're gonna trim some of this fat. And the fat, I'm not throwing it, cause uh, I'm gonna make a later video and I'm gonna make a sausage and I need fat. So here, here's the fat. I don't wanna trim off all the fat, just some of it. I wanna leave about a quarter inch of it on. See what I mean by a good sharp knife? It makes the job easier. Okay, we're back. Um, since I have two briskets to brine, uh, I figured I better cut them in pieces and small pieces to make them fit in the brine bucket. But you can see how much fat I took off. And uh, I left some fat on. I don't want all the fat off because fat gives flavor and the smoke is gonna to adhere to that and plus the, the rub that I'm gonna put on it. So it'll be good. And then we're gonna work on that one. Then we're gonna start brining. We'll see you then. Okay, we're in the garage. Go on to the ice maker. Uh, I'm gonna put about four scoops of this ice. Maker. What you don't want to do is put your meat into a hot brine and start the cooking process. You don't want to do that. What you want to do is you want to cool it down as quick as you can and put your meat in a cold brine. Come in here, look at me. That's our brine. Nice cold brine. Push it all the way down. Throw in these yellow pieces too. And then we'll get ready for the next one. Push it all the way down. There you go. We'll see you there. Okay, I wanna show you why I waited to get my brining bucket. Okay, this piece goes in right here and it locks in and you push it down and you lock it and now nothing will float. Everything will stay on the bottom. And that's why you gotta have a brining bucket. If not that, a bag or something, but I thought this was cool, so I wanted one. So everything stays down. I don't have to come and turn it every couple of days. Everything is in there. Now all I gotta do is get it in the refrigerator. So we'll see you then. Hi, welcome to my kitchen. Day 10 of mandatory stay at home coronavirus. So it's been 19 days since it's been marinating and uh, I took a few pieces out. You can see it looks like pastrami. I got it in my brander bucket. It's been spiced. Uh, how can I say it? If you buy pastrami in a bag and when you open the bag, it's slimy. That's exactly what happened here. The spices and everything and the, everything is breaking down. So what I do is I put it over here, wash it under water. Cause that's what you do when you got it in the bag, you wash it and you get all that stuff off and you get up everything off clean and then you put it in your pan and you just keep going. You get the idea what I'm doing. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, what I did is I rinsed uh, the pastrami in cold water to get all the excess salt off, get all the slime off, get off all that junk. And I washed our brine bucket and I put it away. I'm getting ready to put it away. And I want to tell you, uh, if you do a lot of brining, if you're interested in making pastrami and bacon and things like that, uh, it cost me $74 and I got all three of them. You see my other video, I ordered it. Uh, 
it's a good product. It works really well, and I like that that thing that they got that locks in the meat on the bottom and it keeps it from rising up. I, I loved it. I kept it in the refrigerator for 18 days and it was bomb. And the meat never came up. Uh, it's worth 70 bucks. I mean, if you barbecue a lot, it's worth it. It's just another little handy dandy little tool that you could have in the kitchen. But anyways, uh, I did that. Uh, the meat smells like pastrami and I'm getting ready to make uh, the next step. We have to rub it. Uh, I'm going to rub it down the mustard and the spice and then we're gonna take it out to the pit. I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, we're getting ready to make our spice. I got uh, about six whole red dried chilies. I'm throwing that in there. About six bay leaves, throwing that in there. And I'm gonna grind that first, and then I'm gonna grind the rest of it. And it's gonna be a little bit noisy for a minute, but you'll see. nice and all chopped up put that right there you know the pickling spice that you buy at Spanish stores and it's got the coriander mustard seed and all that good stuff well that's it right there it basically comes out to a half cup a little bit under a half cup so I'm throwing that in there and I'm gonna grind that up not a full grind like I did that one but this this is enough to crack it open you hear it about 10, 12 shots should do it. Okay, now I'm gonna put it in our shaker bottle. Add this spice. Now I got a quarter cup of black pepper and I'm gonna grind that up. That goes in our shaker bottle. Now we can shake it on our action there. Okay, I decided to add a little bit of uh, smoked hot paprika, not a lot, because it is hot. One teaspoon, just like that, just to give it a little color. And, I don't know about you, but I love Old Bay. So I'm just gonna put a little Old Bay, I'm only gonna put about a teaspoon, because it's salty. So, here we go, one tablespoon. Okay, we also decided that we're gonna put a little bit of uh, granulated garlic. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of that in there, just like that. Teaspoon of granulated onion, just like that for flavor. And we're gonna give that a mix. We tasted it and it, believe it or not, has a dry spice, it tastes very good. So it's gonna taste great on that meat. We'll see you in a second for the next step. Okay, we got everything ready. Uh, I got a clean, brand new bar towel. I put that down and I got another clean, brand new bar towel right here. And these are the spices that we use. I'll get those out of the way so you can see. And you could use any old mustard. I'm just using this, just the mustard. And what we do is we take a piece of pastrami, put it there, and then wipe it down, get it dry so the spice can stick. like that and then move this I guess so we don't want to spice on that and then what I'm gonna do is rub it down in mustard a light coat all the way around I'm using one clean one clean hand and one uh, hand for uh, spreading the mustard and putting on the spice so you see what I'm doing I'm putting it all over sides everywhere and then make sure it's all under I got the other hand dirty but I got a clean rag right here now the spice that we made this is it right here put it on there just like that all the way around rub it in there get the sides You want everything to get a little seasoning. Just like that. And I'm gonna finish all of that. Then I'm gonna go start a fire and I'll show you how I start a fire. 
I'll see you in a few minutes. There you go. I guess it must have looked fun for Zach because she wants to try it too. Yep. She don't talk very much, but trust me, <laughs> she could talk. Oh, trust me. Been married 35 years. Trust me, she could talk. Oh, yeah. See? Yes, I chose not to talk. She chooses not to talk on camera. But we're getting it done. Uh, you can see I transferred it to another pan and... Uh, we're gonna take it outside in a few minutes. And uh, these smaller pieces here, uh, those are gonna, uh, we're gonna do the same thing to them, but uh, we're gonna eat those as soon as they're done. That's gonna take some time. The bigger pan is gonna take some time. It's probably gonna take, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, three, four hours. I'm gonna smoke it on one pit, and then I'm gonna uh, give it a hot shot on another pit. So it's, it's a little bit of a process. But uh, hey, we're quarantined at home. We're not quarantined, but it's stay at home, mandatory stay at home. So I'm finding, my, finding ways to amuse myself. So this is one of them. Uh, it's a little bit time consuming. It's a little bit expensive, a little bit hard, but uh, I ain't doing nothing anyways. So I guess we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, we're outside. We're getting ready to go a little bit more clean on the pit. I haven't used this for about, I would say two years. I cleaned it up a little bit, but I'm gonna start. I got some uh, red oak on this side, and I got some uh, hickory on this side. I'm just using the torch just to get it started. But it's hot already. Uh, this is a, a different kind of pit. This is a, a barbecue shell pit, and it's basically a charcoal pit. But I called up smoke granny, and I bought the smoke apparatus, and I cut a hole in it, and uh, I made it a pellet grill or a regular grill. That's part of being a pit master. You've got to modify things to make it work to your satisfaction. So, if I get this hot, I think that's good right now. I'm going to close it up and bring out our meat. I just want to show you what the meat looks like. Uh, with the mustard and the spice and all that and we're getting ready to put it on our grill so i'll see you in a bit when i start putting it on that right there is the pellet hopper uh that should last for what i got in there maybe for two or three cooks so i mean it's good but uh, the pellets sometimes get a little expensive they're like 15 bucks for like i don't know 20 30 pounds but uh it's good they got all different flavor woods and all that but every now and then i like to throw on just a little extra wood so we could uh, so give it a little bit more flavor, more enhanced. I found that the pellets are not that smoky, so I add on a little bit more like hickory or cherry or something. So we're gonna start putting on meat. All right, this says 300. I think it will be at 400. Once it gets good and hot, I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. So I think it's hot. So we can see our pit. I'm gonna put our small pieces over here so they cook. lunch for me and Jackie. This is a heavy piece of soup. Hopefully I'll get all of it on at one time. Check back with you in about two hours and see where we're at. You can see it's really, it's hot. I got lava rock in there and I got like a, like a quarter inch piece of wood one right on top of the hot spot. 
so that way it could uh, the heat could spread out so I don't get one hot spot so that's what I did there I modified it uh, took me some time between uh, business family and church took me about three months to get it done but I got it done hey Danny what's going on what are you doing sitting down watching the pit what's going on with the pit well I'm making sure that it doesn't get too much smoke I'm making sure everything is working you see that little smoke coming out just like that mm -hmm. not too much not any different color clear white smoke that's perfect that's just the way it's supposed to smoke and I'm probably going to open it maybe another 20 minutes maybe flip it and I'm just sitting down here relaxing all right. This is what pit masters do. They just sit down, relax, and watch the meat cook. And hold the dog. And hold the dog. All right. This is my dog, Sugar. I should have named her Purdy because she's so pretty to me. Okay, it's been about, I don't know, maybe an hour, an hour and a half. And I opened it once and I turned it. But I want I want you to see how perfect this thing is smoking, how, how it's working. Uh, I mean, it's using up some charcoal, some of these pellets, but not a lot. You can see it move a little bit. I just seen it move. There you go. Move the end. But it's, it's using some of them. And you see our meat? I flipped it once and look how it looks. I'm going to let it go for another, I don't know, an hour, an hour and a half maybe. Then I'm going to finish it in the oven and that way it will be nice and tender. And I'm going to wrap it in foil and finish it in the oven. So we'll see you then. Okay, it's been about three and a half, four hours. It's got some smoke, it's got some char to it, but now I'm taking it off the pit and I'm gonna take it inside and finish it in the oven. It's not done, but it's almost there. It, it's cooked through and through, but it's not tender. So this process is gonna, the finish is gonna make it tender. Let me tell you something, this pit did a phenomenal job today. Uh, how can I say it? that smoke daddy apparatus of all the years that I had it, today it worked the best. And I'm, I'm really, really, really pleased the way it worked today. So if, if you have the ability, buy yourself that and hook it up to a pit or a drum or whatever you're gonna do, it really does work good. And we didn't use that many, uh, that much of the, of the pellets. I think, I think maybe a pound, two pounds of pellets and it went for three, four hours. So, like I said, there's enough pellets in there to go for two, three cooks more. So, it's pretty good. We'll see you inside. Okay, we're back on the inside. I don't know if you can see this, but you see how it's got a nice color, smoky. Uh, how can I say it? It's, it's cooked, but it's not where it's tender. So, we're going to finish it in the oven, and it's going to be tender. So, we're gonna, I got the oven preheated at 350. I'm probably gonna go let it go for, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half in the aluminum foil, and that should make it nice and tender, and I'll take it out, let it cool. Okay, I got them all wrapped up. That is, believe it or not, two briskets, but uh, well trimmed, uh, and I'm getting ready to put them in that pan and then throw them in the oven. I decided not to put it at 350. I think I'm gonna put it around 250 and let it go for four or five hours, and that'll make it nice and tender. So we'll see you then. Okay, we got it in the oven, and uh, I set it at 250. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. And I'm getting ready to shut the door. Okay, getting ready to take out the meat. Uh, it went in there about 6 o'clock. It's 10.46 right now. So it went at uh, 250. I'm sure it's done now. Uh, I'm going to put it on the countertop, let it cool down. And I'm going to put it in the refrigerator, and tomorrow we'll slice it up. Okay, it's the next day. This meat chilled in the refrigerator. Uh, we're slicing it at about a one and a half, two. You can see it. It's not that thick, not that thin. It's just right. Uh, it's got a great taste to it. Uh, I'm going to, I was just going to do a little bit, and then make it a sandwich, and later I'll finish it. But uh, I decided the machine is out. We're here. I'm here. The machine is here, so we're going to slice it all. So I'll see you when I get her all done. Okay. Got a little good slicer. Okay. Uh, we sliced all the meat. We cleaned up everything. We put away our slicer. And now what we're doing is we're making two pound packs of pastrami. And I'm giving it the, the last spice. 
I'm pouring a little uh, uh, spring water that's hot and I got a little pastrami seasoning and I'm just giving it a light sprinkle to give it an extra taste. And then I'm gonna mix it. Then I'm gonna make two pound bags and vacuum pack it with our sealer and uh, put it away in the freezer. And But we're gonna make sandwiches, you'll see them. Okay, we're right at two pounds. Show the... So we're right there at two pounds. And we're good. We got our food saver. And now it's sealed. And now we can put it in the freezer or whatever and we're ready to use it. But I'm gonna save some for sandwiches. What I'm doing with the pastrami is I put a little oil in this uh, grill and I'm just getting it hot. And then I got some french fries. Then I got a panini maker going over there. And then I got some processed uh, American, not American, processed Swiss cheese that's gonna go in the sandwich. I'm gonna make two kinds of sandwich. I'm gonna make the LA pastrami. And then I'm gonna make the sauerkraut. Mm -hmm. It's a Reuben, I'm gonna make Reuben. a Reuben. That's what it's called. All right, uh, I'm gonna make two kinds of pastrami sandwiches. This is the LA pastrami, mustard pickles, and Swiss cheese, and french fries. Looks pretty solid. You got cheese in here too? Yeah, got cheese in there. What there. kind of cheese is this? Uh, processed Swiss cheese. Swiss. So it melts better. Man, this looks really good. Let's give it a shot. Go ahead. Mm. Mm. Wow. Man, delicious. What do you think of that pastrami? That pastrami today makes it day 20 mm -hmm. that it took me to make it. 19 days in the brine. Man, it's just perfect. It's not over salty, which is the best thing. Yep. And it's just full of flavor. What do you think of the spice, the way I got it? It's perfect. It's not too spicy. It's not under spiced. It's just full of flavor, very flavorful. Wow. And the way the cheese, you have the cheese and, and, and the yeah. mustard, and the way you pressed it, it just makes it all one package. Yeah, I put it in the panini press. It's like a Cuban going crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it feels like a little bit. <laughs> It's very good. Very what do you got to say? He's too busy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got to say, Roma? I can't lie. It's really amazing. What Frank said is true because usually pastrami is really salty. And it's not salty. It's just perfect. Well, thank you. That was the L.A. pastrami. Now this is uh, the Reuben. This has got sauerkraut, Swiss cheese, and uh, a pastrami on it. So. Oh, and, no and sauerkraut and what else has got the uh, jewish rye bread that's what it is so this is the reuben go ahead try it guys all right let's give it a whack check this out nice and juicy looking pretty good nice and crispy. Oh, very very good mm. <laughs> what do you say frank Wow, I think I like this one better. Really? Yeah, because it's a little more, you can, you can really taste the sour. Yeah. And um, man, it just blends in so nice. It's so juicy. And Pale, it's not salty, it's just, it's just right, it's balanced, well balanced. The spice that, you, uh, that you're tasting is, uh, after I cooked it, I added a little bit more spice and then I vacuum packed it. So you're tasting that pastrami taste right there. Okay. Yeah, so I did. I did that earlier. Oh, this is awesome. Such is number one. Very good. So you got to say, right? Pretty solid. I usually, I'm not a fan of the sauerkraut, but like Frank said, it needs so much. So it's got perfect balance in the sandwich. Everything it's not one another. Yeah, it does. It doesn't. One thing doesn't outweigh the other thing. Because sometimes the the. The, the cheese, or there'll be too much cheese, or there'll be too much sauce, and it'll be yeah. too strong. Yeah, it'll ruin yeah. it. Yeah. No, perfect. Bomb, toasted, perfect toasted. Yeah. Gotta love that panini maker. <laughs> it's Cuban going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put way too much sour cream. Mm -hmm. Sandwich Thank is on the money. You taste everything. You taste the moss, the cheese, the juice. You could tell he took his time out and really, really. I tasted the first one. But this seven, the second one is bomb. It is on the money. Now, if I had a restaurant and I charged 10 bucks for that sandwich, someone would give me 10 bucks for it? Oh yeah, definitely. I would definitely. 
Yeah. Definitely. All right, Jack. We got, we got 30 bucks here so far. Come on. <laughs> Okay, we made some more pastrami sandwiches on the grill. What do you got to say, uh, Mari? Better than cats in New York. Better than cats in New York. It was really? Dry over there. It was nasty. This one's bomb. What do you got and to I'm say? I'm not eating it on bread. And this got yeah. This got yeah. Uh, protein style. Oh yeah. What do you got to say, Pierre? Langers. It's better than Langers. Better than Langers? Yep. Uh, well, it uh, cured for 19 days, but I didn't sit there and wait 19 days. Matter of fact, they had to remind me. Hey, you got meat in the refrigerator. So, right. what do you got to say, Jeff? Jeff's a food enthusiast. I mean, I, I ate Brent's here in, uh, what is that, Northbridge. I ate, uh, what's that other one? Cats. Langers. Langers. Langers, cats, I mean, can't compare it. Which one is better? This is, this is bomb. Really? Okay. Homemade. What do you got to say, Sam? Did you taste it? Pretty bomb. Pretty bomb? It's pretty bomb. Cool, cool, cool. Mm -hmm.